Last Sunday we had uh, Pastor Pascal Mboka from uh, Mombasa sharing the word of God with us. And um, we were talking about, what were we talking about? The ego Christian. So I want to say that Pastor Pascal did a very, very good job. He did, a mag I mean, it was beautiful. It was good. Uh, but I want us to do part two. I just want to pick it up from where he left. And just to do a quick recap. Uh, he read for us um, Deuteronomy 32, 9 to 13 that says, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is, is the place of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the wasteland, a howling wilderness. He encircled him. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him. And there was no foreign God with him. He made him ride in the heights of the earth that he might eat and produce of the fields. He made him draw honey from the rock and oil from the flinty rock. And Pastor Pascal was telling us that uh, the word of God uses many, many uh, scriptures to signify or to speak to the, I mean, to speak to the Christian or to the child of God. And what you're supposed to do to be able to understand why God uses certain animals or certain creatures uh, is to, for you to go and study that animal, to be able to find out how is that animal, how does it behave? Because he will be using that, those characteristics, because there's something that he wants to speak to you as a Christian. And that is why Pastor Pascal titled his message, The Ego Christian. And so we are looking at part two of The Ego Christian. Um, and uh, he, he, he said that the ego will stir the nest to make sure that the eaglets don't remain in the comfort zone. Uh, so that means there has to come to, um, I mean, the, the, the eaglets have to come to a place of maturity. And that applies even for us. God expects us to get, I mean, to come to a place of maturity. And even for us as uh, our, our children, do our children continue to stay with us forever? No. No. By the time you are 30, you should be hitting the road running to go and live on your own. Don't stay, stay in your mother's house, eating your mother's food, sleeping on your mother's bed. Huh? You're supposed to? To grow up. Take up responsibility. Take care of yourself. Take care of your bills. You know, that is what is supposed to happen. So the first thing that Pastor Pascal told us is that the ego is a fruitful bird. And that is why it has young ones. That's why we talk about the eaglets. That's why we talk about the eaglets being talked how to fly. Because it is fruitful. And that was speaking to us that even for us, God expects us to be fruitful. Uh, we read John 15 verse 5 and, six, uh, verse, 5 and, and verse 16. Let's have John 15. Uh, we want to read verse 5 and then we are going to read verse 16. It says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him. Uh, bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing so God expects us to do what to bear fruit and you need to ask yourself how have you been bearing fruit and I say it for most of us or for all of us we have fulfilled only one we have been able to bring forth children but fruitfulness in Meishia Wapi Meishia Hapo but it is not supposed to be like that we are supposed to bear fruit one of the things you should be asking yourself, each and every one of you, under the sound of my voice, you should be asking yourself, how many children have I brought into the kingdom? Who can stand up and say, I am a Christian today because Ernest led me to the Lord. Because Lysa preached to me and I gave my life to Christ. I don't want to ask you to lift up your hands. How many of you have ever led anybody to the Lord? Because I don't want to embarrass you. But what I expect is ujite wapi? Eh, kamkutano. Ujite? Kamkutano, ujiulize. Do I have any fruit? Is there anybody who will end up in the kingdom? Because I shared the love of God with them. 
Let's look at verse 16 of John, John, of John chapter uh, 15. It says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should be remain. So that tells us we don't just give birth and live on the street. That means you lead somebody to the Lord and you walk with them until they mature and they can be able to stand up on your feet. And I want to ask you, how many are you raising? People are looking down. You look down for now, but you will lift up your eyes. Ask yourself, you call yourself for a meeting. Ask yourself, whom have I ever led to the Lord? Number two, ask yourself, who am I discipling right now? And I said, I don't want to ask anybody to lift up their hands. Because I don't want to embarrass you. But it is up to you to call yourself for a meeting. Eh? I like the way people are smiling. Call yourself for a meeting. And answer those two questions. Are we together? Answer those two questions. So he says... I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Iyo patia, ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Iyo tunataka anga sana kusikia. Iyo tunataka, and we will say a very loud amen. Apo. Eh, but ujue, iyo, that script, it is in one scripture. Iyo ya <laughs> asking the Father in, in my name and I will give you the first part is talking about fruitfulness and fruit that lasts. Are we together? So, uh, so ego Christians produce and they don't wait for the pastor to produce. So don't wait. Who is supposed to produce? You. Are we together? I am raising you. I am ministering to you. I am equipping you so that you can produce. Are we together? So we all need to be fruitful. The second thing we saw about uh, an ego Christian is that they have a strong relationship with God and we said this strong relationship with God has to be cultivated. It has to be cultivated. Just like any relationship it has to be cultivated. Number three, we say that you have to be uh, mentored from the fact that the ego teaches the young ones how to fly. You need a mentor. And we said everybody needs and mentor. And who is your first mentor here? Not the only one. Who is the first mentor? Who is your first mentor? Pastor Pascal aliwambia. Nitaenda kuwambia. Those your students. Huh? Who is your first mentor? Your shepherd. Doesn't mean he's the only sh uh, sh mentor. But they, I am your mentor. When it comes to matters spiritual. So mentor the mentor will teach us methods. They offer the much needed counsel that we need. Mentors are connectors. They filter. They are filters you can use to filter your ideas. You know, before you go and you are conned, just pass whatever you want to do. Just let your pastor know what you're about. Don't come crying after you have lost 700,000. Huh? Because the deal was too good and you didn't think twice. Huh? Pastor Cornelius, what are you saying? Huh? Yeah, 700,000 in seven days. You don't want to do that. Did you read a story of a man? <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there was a man on social media who lost 700,000 in? Yes. Pass through some. There are just some things. Let me tell you. There are things that your pastor will see that sometimes you can't see. And I have helped many people who are just about to lose. It may not have been 700,000. It could have been 70,000. Now, not even in seven days, but in a day. He ended to You just kiss it and you unaona and yo imeenda na ime? Na imeenda. Are we together? So we are saying they are filters and you can use them to filter your ideas. And we said it is not the work of the mentors to look for you. Who looks for the other? The mentor or the mentee? The mentee looks for the mentor. Then number uh, four, the final one, he finished by saying we must learn to take risks. Uh, the mother ego stars and destroys the nest so that the eagles, eaglets can leave the comfort zone. Uh, and so that means sometimes you have to fear not. Many times our blessing is in the risk. 
I loved that. Let me tell you, that is very true. The blessing is in the risk. It too, we took a risk. As a church, we took a risk. Are we together? Was it a good risk? Was it a good risk? Yes, it was a good risk. Wait until this building is finished. Then you will realize it was a good risk. Otherwise, had we continued there, we would still be saying how we don't have space, how we don't have a parking, how Sunday school is not enough, and we are just whining and whining. Hmm? Complaining, mumbling, and grumbling. All those are birds of a feather. <laughs> are we together? So, uh, we need to step out. God opening, uh, the, the whole issue of God opening d new doors because we are willing to take the risk. If the ego does not learn how to fly, the next thing that would happen to it is that it would die. Are we together? And at the point when you don't take the risk, when God expects you to take the risk, what ends up happening is that you die in as far as that particular issue that God is asking you to take a risk in is concerned. So today, we want to look at what we are going to look at today. We want to learn quite a number of principles from the ego. I want us to read a scripture in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. It says, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths or even the young people shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our Father and our God, we just want to come before you this morning. Lord, even as we look at the characteristics of an ego, we want to pray, Lord, that even as we interact with your word, you will give us eyes to see. You will give us ears to hear. And you will give us a heart that understands that which you want to say to us this morning. Even as we come to the close of this year, we just want to hear from you, O oh God. And therefore, Lord, we open up our hearts to you. We yield ourselves to you, O oh God, and ask, O oh God, have your own way in our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Pray. Amen. We started by saying that the Lord uses the ego to describe the life of a Christian. I want to start from where it all starts. We want to look at the love life of an ego. And all of those who are not married and are believing God to get married, listen to this and listen to it well. We want to look at how the ego, how they come together. And we want to learn a few principles uh, from the ego. When an ego begins to woo the female ego, it takes time before the female ego are in gear box. It may look like they are playing hard to get, but they are not playing hard to get. They are wise. Tell your neighbor the ego is wise. So this is what happens. When the male ego begins to woo the female ego, the female ego flies down and goes and gets a twig. Then flies up very high and drops the twig. And what he expects is that the male ego will go after the twig and catch it before he, it falls. And this is repeated over and over. And every time she repeats, she goes higher. And if the male ego is interested, what will they keep doing? Go get it. <laughs> Are we together? Why is the 
female ego doing that and it goes on that might go on three four five times that is a test the female ego wants to know can i trust you can i what can i trust you are you dependable I want to speak to the young people here who are not married. Before we give a box. <laughs> eh? You have to be sure you you trust and that works both ways. That not just speaking to the ladies for the men. It works both ways. Before you are finally convinced now we give a box. You want to be sure is this somebody I can depend on? Are we together? Later we will see that this test works because there is a time when the male ego will depend also on the female ego. The other thing you need to know about them is that the male ego, once, the, once now they come together and the, the female ego lays the eggs, it is the work of the male ego to protect the eggs. And that is why she needed to know first beforehand. The, the female ego is not interested in laying eggs and they don't all hatch. I mean, hatch. So she wants to be sure, is this guy dependable? Will he watch over the eggs? Are we together? Even as the ego, the, the mother ego is teaching the young ones how to fly, it is not just her responsibility alone. Her, she's in the, te, in the, she's in the nest, destroying the nest and making it uncomfortable so that these two things can do what? Can live. Telling them, now you are mature, go and fend for yourselves. You can no longer continue to eat my food. I can no longer. So as she's pushing, the the male ego is also watching. Once they are dropped, he is also there hovering and watching over them and making sure they don't hit the ground. If those small egos are not pushed out, today we will not be having egos and they will not become egos. It is the same way when you are pushed out, in our walk with God, there comes a time where God pushes you out of your comfort zone. You are used to money coming in at a certain rate. You are used to having all your, I mean, you're sure. I mean, this is, I mean, money is coming, you're sure, you're sure. But there comes that time when money is not coming in as you expect. What has God done? He has removed you from your comfort zone. And at that time, what happens? You trust in God, even when you cannot trace him or when you cannot be able to see him. So if you do not learn how to fly, as I said earlier, you will end up dying. And let me tell you, that car training for the eaglet, sometimes they will fall 5 to 15 times before they finally learn how to fly. The first time when they are dropped, they don't even know how to use their wings. So kanangukanga tuivi. Just goes like this. Are we together? But in desperation, there is a time she will, they will do this and they realize, by the way, there are some two things here. And if I do this, there is a way na, the, the going down in a fanyanini, it is reducing. So that is how they do what? There is no other way to learn how to fly. You, you learn to fly from being dropped from up there. Then you come just before you hit the ground. The ego or the mother ego comes under. Pick, I mean, holds you up. You land on top so that you don't fall. But there are times when they actually do fall. And they will fall 5 to 15 times before they finally learn how to walk. That is how God also works with us. Do you remember Peter? When Jesus is walking on water. They had never seen anything like that. And Jesus, I mean, Peter asks, is that you? And he says, it, 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 I mean, yes, it is me. So he says, if it is me, tell me to come. And Jesus gave an opportunity to Peter to be able to walk on water. Sometimes God will cause you 
to I mean to 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 walk I, I I mean to go into a journey that you have never ever walked before and as he's doing that he's building your muscle he's building your capacity and we are going to be seeing that later are we together number four eagles I want to talk about the eyes of the eagles eagles have very interesting eyes they have what we call very accurate vision I don't know how many of you have ever seen a chicken outside your compound and a kibad just came and picked it. You saw it as he went. Now, Kajua here. Going, 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 gone. Let me tell you, that eagle did not see your chicken from it, it was not on top of your roof so it saw the chicken it had seen it five kilometers you know we know kilometers heavy but i want you to imagine five kilometers heavy are we together that means it was very very high naika decide that one is my breakfast it just from up there five kilometers ago what does it say that is my breakfast. And it keeps focus. That is my breakfast. As it is coming down, are there distractions? Are there other birds flying? Is there some wind blowing? Eh? Are there sometimes uh, things that are obscuring the, the vision? Depending, you see, to just, just come in a straight line. But it had already, it is focused. That is my for breakfast and let me tell you that will be the breakfast if it says that is the breakfast that is the breakfast they have an ability to focus on something that is five kilometers away no matter the obstacles and what does that teach us to have a vision and to remain focused are we together have a vision and Remain focused. Don't allow distractions. There are so many distractions that will distract that, um, that ego from going for your chicken. But it will definitely go for your chicken. They have the best sight. It doesn't matter how the weather is. Because if we, if we say that the weather interferes for, with them, then when it is very stormy and when it is very cloudy, what would we be expecting? Egos falling down to the ground, dying of hunger. But have you ever seen that phenomenon? Have you ever seen something like that happening? Where egos are just dropping left, left, right, and center because they are dying because the, the weather is not good. They can't see clearly. Have you ever seen something like that? That means their eyes, their vision is still sharp even when it is very cloudy. So whether the cloud, I mean the sky is clear or it is very dark, their vision is very good. Let me tell you, egos actually get fish from the ocean, uh, from the sea i don't know how many of you have ever seen movies when you watch national national geographic and such you will see eagles coming from very very high up um, they have seen a fish in the water go in pick a fish and go up with it you wonder how did they see it is their vision they have very good sight. But you know, we are also supposed to be like that. The word of God says that we sit with him in heavenly places. That means we can see better when we sit, we choose to sit with Christ and see things through his eyes. One of the things we have been learning in the, uh, during the, uh, the Friday meetings, uh, the encounter with the word, right now we are talking about spiritual sight. The ability to be able to see beyond what everybody else is seeing. Beyond their parent. Seeing things from the eyes of God. We don't want to be like chickens. Chickens only see what is in front of them. And that's why they are always looking down. There's a difference with somebody who is just looking. When you just look down, you see the circumstances and you quish away. You become weak. Huh? 
your legs lack strength and all you can do is collapse. Collapse on the inside. But egos look at situations from above. And we are supposed to look at situations from above, from the eyes of God. Look at the thing the way that God is looking at it. When you look at things like a chicken, you are just seeing what is in front of your eyes. All you will see is that this challenge has come to finish me. But if you look at it from above, from where God is standing, you can be able to say, this challenge has not come to finish me, it has come to make me. When you are high up, you see beyond. Many of us make decisions based on what is happening here, right now. And that is why we end up making permanent decisions because of temporary problems. Can I repeat that? You end up making because of temporary problems. In this church we say when you don't have money it, you are temporarily challenged. Tell your neighbor temporarily challenged. Yes, I am just financially I, am, I'm, I mean temporarily challenged financially. That is what we normally say. What does that mean? It does, it does not come to last. It's just for a season. And the word season, what does it mean? Seasons come and go. It means it shall also come to pass. The sun doesn't shine forever. Eh, kadil kataiva. It's only men who understand those kind of things. No wonder it came from a man. Kadil kakotu? Kataiva. Kidogo tu. Are we together? Ladies don't know that. <laughs> they want here and now. <laughs> huh? So we are saying we don't want to look at things based on where they are right now. We want to stand where God is standing. That means you're standing up. You get when you're high. When you're looking at things from a high place, you get perspective. You are able to see the bigger picture. And that way you won't end up making a permanent decision because of a temporary problem. Let's say you don't get rent. Maybe money didn't come in the way you expected. Does that move, mean you move out of your house immediately and go and look for a bed sitter? No, that will be making a permanent decision because of a temporary problem. Are we together? Can we continue? So when you go up, you are able to get perspective. I want us to look at a, an example of the prophet Habakkuk in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 says, The burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you violence and you will not save. Why do you, not, why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. That is in chapter 1. And, and I want you to read the whole of the book of Habakkuk. I think it's only three at most four chapters. So what is he doing right now? He's complaining. He's grumbling. He's whining. He's asking God, how long shall I keep calling you and you're not hearing? That means he doesn't have a perspective. I'm, I mean, kimeumana. And all he's seeing is trouble and problems. He's not seeing anything else. And all he can do is complain. Are we together? Let's look at chapter 2 verse 4. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. What has happened? His eyes have begun to. No wonder he can say the just shall live by. Not by sight. Not based on how things are. Not based on what you are seeing. He's saying the just shall live by. By the time he gets to chapter 3. Let's look at chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. He has now developed perspective. He has shifted from down there like a chicken just looking at what is in front. Just what is immediate. 
He has now shifted and he has decided to stand where God is standing. Where God is and begin to see through the eyes of God. And be able to look at things the way God is looking at them. And when you get to Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 9 he says, Though the fig tree may not blossom. No fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food. Though the flock may be cut off from the folds, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Is he rejoicing because of good things? No, all those are negative. All those are negative things happen. And he's saying, even though those things happen, He's saying, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me to walk on my high heels. That tells you the sight has changed. His way of looking at things has done what? He's changed, has changed. That even though the circumstances don't look favorable, he's no longer complaining. He's no longer grumbling. He's no longer murmuring against God. He's saying, even if it is like that, yet I will rejoice in the Lord God, the God of my salvation. By the time he's saying that, it means he has already shifted from looking at things down like a chicken and he's now operating like a nigo. He's seeing the bigger picture. He's seeing far. He's seeing beyond. The, he's seeing beyond these particular circumstances and our, the situation. Our prayer should be that, that the Lord should touch our eyes that we may be able to see like he does. Or through his eyes. Look at things. Not through your natural eyes. Not through your physical eyes. But look at things through the eyes of God. The way God sees them. And I'm reminded of this man. Who was blind. And um, I mean. Jesus uh, touched him. And uh, I mean. Uh, restored his sight. But the first time when his sight is restored. You can get me that scripture. I think it was in, was it John? The first time when he's healed after, I mean, Jesus now, uh, I mean, uh, touches his eyes and heals him. The first time he's asked whether he sees, he says he's seeing men like trees. That means he didn't have clear vision. In Greek, that's what is called marudurudu. <laughs> that is what is called marudurudu. Uh, yes. That means he was not seeing clearly. So he says he's, he's seeing men walking like trees. And G, that is in Mark, yes, chapter 8. Um, so verse 24 says, And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Let's read verse 25. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. There comes a time when our vision is not clear. And I'm not talking about physical vision. I am talking about spiritual vision. When we are not seeing clearly, we are not seeing ourselves. We are not seeing the, the, our circumstances. We are not seeing God clearly. And there comes a time when you have to cry out to God and tell God, Touch my eyes. Help me to see again. Are we together? Number five. Egos do not eat dead things. Egos are not like, uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are not like, um, they are not like vultures. Or this other bird that was feeding Elijah, ravens. They are not like ravens. They don't go to dustbins. You will never see an eagle going to the dustbin to fend in the dustbin. You will not see an eagle going to eat a carcass that died three days ago. And they are trying to see whether there is still some 
meat they can get. Eagles eat fresh prey. That's why they will come for your chicken. Not the one you have slaughtered and it is dead. Umesahawapo inje ulikuwa umeachapo na basin. You decided, uh, I, by the way, this, shape, this knife is not as sharp as I want. So you leave your chicken there and you go to the house. You will still find it. Other birds may come and get that. But eagles always go for fresh play, prey. That is why they will go for chicken. That's why they will catch your rabbit. That is why they will sometimes even get a cayenne goat. You know the, the, the cows when they are very, very young? They will be lifted by an eagle. From Eagles will always go for fresh things. What does that mean for us? Stay away from outdated and old information. Be a learner. And always wanting to discover new things. That means you have to become a person who researches. Don't just be, uh, don't just be content with a little word of God that you know. Deep, dig, dig, dig deeper into the word of God. Don't just be content with a few three, four memory verses that you memorized when you were in Sunday, I mean in Sunday school. Want to memorize more. Stop relying on your past uh, successes. Some of you still live in the past successes. You used to be number one in class for the whole year and you still live there. <laughs> Are we together? You still live there. That is that, that accomplishment. That is what keeps you going. The fact that you used to be number one in primary school. From the, the day you entered class one up to class eight. I used to be number one every time. And you live there. Apo ndio ulikuwa mia apo. Stop living in past successes. Look for new territories to conquer. Are we together? There remains like uh, the, I mean, the children of Israel were told. You have been in this going around this mountain too long. There remains yet more ground that needs to be covered. There remains yet more ground that needs to be conquered. So stop living in your past. Leave the past where it's supposed to be. It is in the past. Are we together? And look at the present and more and most important, look at the future. The children of Israel when they were in the wilderness used to feed on fresh manna. They had been told to go out and collect what they needed for that particular day. And every time they went and picked out more, what would happen by the following day it would be rotten. And God was trying to teach them a principle. The principle was freshness, fresh manner. Look at Jesus when he's teaching his disciples to pray. Part of the Lord's prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. That means there's something fresh for you every morning. And that is why this morning during the interactive discipleship I was saying, let's not get familiar with the word of God. The minute a man or a woman of God stands up to minister and they say, this is my topic. Some of you switch off because you are like, I have had that topic before. And I was telling you my own experience. I sit under anointed men and women of God. They, they, they start to share from a scripture. It is a scripture I know. Some of them I have even memorized. To make matters worse, it could even be a preacher, a, I mean a scripture I have preached from. They bring it out in a way I have to keep going back to the word of God to check. Is, is it the same Bible? Ama wana, they are quoting from a different one. What does that mean? The word of God is new. It is fresh every morning. And you should always be feeding from fresh manna. Want to get something from God every day. Don't depend on yesterday's message. Don't depend on last week's message. Always look for freshness. Are we together? There is always, God always has something for you. 
And that word, I mean, that the Lord's prayer, give us this day our daily bread, was not just talking about physical bread. It was talking about manna, that, what I mean, that resource that comes from God. He has something fresh for you every morning if you would only dare to go and seek, to go and sit, to go and pray, to go and wait on him. You will discover there is always fresh manna. That's why we can be here a whole year. We are coming to the end. This is the last Sunday of the 11th month of this year. We are coming to the close of the year. But we never repeat sermons. Why? Because God always has new manna for each and every one of us. As individuals, as families, and even as a church. So go for freshness. Tell your neighbor, go for freshness. Don't go for stale food. Number six, eagles love the storm. And I love this one. This last two, the last two, uh, I mean, they are, they are, I, I love those. Eagles love the storm. For us, we are always running away. Shida kidogo tu ikitokea. Bind the devil, Satan. We see the devil more than we see God. Any small thing, the devil. Katika jina la Yesu, riswa. Riswa. But what do we go do? They love the storm. They use the wind from the storm to take them higher. One of the revelations that we need to come to is that your next level is always preceded by a test. By a storm. Can I repeat? Let me come closer. Your next level is always preceded by a storm. And so how you respond to the storm becomes very, very important. It, 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 it determines whether you are going to get to the next level or you will self-destruct. And some of you have self-destructed because you jumped out before we even. Huh? What do we do? We jump out before we are fully baked, before we are fully cooked. The egos thrive. They thrive in the storm. Because this is what they use to lift them up above the clouds. Let me tell you, in the clouds, if you have, if you have flown, for those of you who have uh, had the privilege of being in a plane and you have flown. Where the clouds are, you can't see. You can't see. So the ego needs to fly above the clouds. You see, where the clouds are, especially when you're passing through a cloud uh, on the plane, you normally experience turbulence. So these eagles love the storm because it causes them to go higher. And going higher means they go above this turbulence here. They don't want to dwell here. They go. The, this turbulence pushes them higher. When they are there, now above, because of, the, because of the storm, that is where they just glide. 
By the way, when they are there, they don't need to keep doing this. Have you seen a bird just flying? What is it doing? They are resting their wings. They're just gliding. The storm is actually the one that is just moving from them. From what they are not put using any effort. But for us, in the storm, what do we do? <laughs> Trying to come out. Huh? You are kicking and uh, screaming and pulling your hair. And... <laughs> with a hoarse voice. You have lost your voice. Kemering, what you don't know, you are kemering God. Because it is God, it is God who has brought it. Whereas, it should be a moment to just be still. Stop this. Just glide. Just allow God to carry you through. Let me tell you, it is in, that, in such moments where God carries you. I remember this story of this man who, 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 who God allowed him to see um, the, 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 his journey, like his journey with God. And he, he, he would see f uh, two pairs, four footsteps. That means two, 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 his and, 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 and for Jesus. But then there, there came a time when he would only see two. And he thought the two were his. And when he looked at those times in his life, he discovered that those were the most difficult days of his life. And he turned to the Lord and asked him, why is it that during the most difficult times of my life, you abandoned me? And I was walking alone. And the Lord told him, no. During the most difficult times of your life, what I did is that I carried you. So the footsteps you're seeing are not yours. They were mine because I was literally carrying you. The times when we are in a storm, it is not the time to waste our energy. It is the time to relax and see God fight for you. And that is why the children of Israel when Pharaoh was behind, the Red Sea was in front. The wilderness was side by side. What did the Lord say? Stand still and see the salvation of God. There comes a time when your effort and your energy is not required. What is required? Stillness. Because God wants you to see, you to see the, his salvation. Because the salvation will not come from you. Where will it come from? From him. Are we together? The other birds, when they are storms, uh, storms don't behave like the ego. Then they go to the branches and the leaves. That's where they go to hide. And unfortunately for some of them, while they are there, that is where they are eaten by snakes. <laughs> what, what, so they are running away from the storm, but they end up in the mouth of the snakes that live on trees. Face your challenges head on, knowing that they will make you better and stronger. Are we together? The challenges are supposed to do what? Make us better and stronger. Let's look at Psalms 84 verse 5 to 7. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you. Whose heart is set on pilgrimage. That word pilgrimage there talks about journeying. That you, you are set on walking and journeying with God. You don't want to just stand still. You don't want just to stay in one place. They are set on moving forward, on advancing. As they pass through the valley of Baker. The valley of Baker is a valley of weeping. If I was to use other words, I would say, as they pass through their storm, 
They make it a spring. Are we together? They make it a what? A spring that talks about that storm becomes your, the place where you are resourced. The place where you are ministered to. The place where you feed. The place where your thirst is quenched. So as they pass through the valley of Baker, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. Sometimes when it rains, the rain is not very calm. It comes like a, 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 I mean, a, like a storm. And that's why we are calling it a storm. But even though it will come like a storm, what are you going to end up with? Pools. And these people, that man who is blessed there, verse 7 is saying, they go from strength to strength and each one appears before God in Zion. What does that mean? The storm does not finish them. The storm that does not destroy them. Because you have, your strength is in God, you are like, I, this one has not come to take me out. I will still stand before God. I will break through. I will make it. And I will stand before God in Zion. This thing is not going to finish me. If anything, it will make me better. It will take me to that next level. They go for strength, from strength to strength, and each one appears before God in Zion. And that is what we need. So the next time you're in a storm, stop wasting your energy. Stop wasting time trying to jump out. Because sometimes you try to jump out. It's like the way you jump out from the frying pan into the fire. And I normally say, the church where I grew up, Apostle Harry Das, the late Apostle Harry Das used to tell us, if God fixes a fix to fix you here, what has he done? He has fixed, get the words, he has fixed a fix to fix you. Akaiweka hapa kwa corner. Sawa. When you get to this corner, una decide kurudi or to overpass. Let me tell you. By the time you are getting here, there will be another one waiting. So, afadhali tu unge deal na hii. Kwa sababu hii, inakuwa ngambaya. It is worse than this first one. That means, what that, that means is, let's face our storms positively. Are we together? Let's become like the egos who love the storm and thrive in the storm. Finally, number seven, as we come to a close. Egos can live for up to about 70 to 80 years or slightly more. That's their lifespan. How many years? 70 to 80. There is no other bird that lives that long. But an ego will. We live between 70 to 80. Some say they, some of them actually manage to do longer than that. When they get to around 40, somewhere between 40 and 60 years, they go through a season of renewal. And what happens is that they go up very, very high up on a mountain. And they take a break. And that's why the, the scripture we read in Isaiah 40, what was saying, uh, the, I mean, talks about renewing their strength. This is how the egos renew their strength. When they are about 40, somewhere between 40 and 60, the ego will go to the mountain, secluded, take a sabbatical, move away from normal activity of feeding eaglets, doing what, teaching eaglets how to fly, it's just on its own. And while there, it will shed off all its feathers. Shed off all its feathers. All of them. And just remain with the skin. 
The only thing you can see, if you happen to see it, uh, if you happen to have the privilege of seeing it, all you will be seeing on it are the marks of the wounds of the things it has been through in life. Maybe where, maybe it went to get something, it went to catch your chicken, so it has a, a, a key wound here, you get her. Huh? Maybe it went to pick something and another animal also wanted to pick it and it, that's all you will see, the wounds. Up there on the mountain, it will look for a rock and it will go and knock its beak. By this time, because of age, when they are young, you normally know see the, the beak is normally like this. But with time as it grows, the beak does what? Bends like this. So it will go and hit its beak against the stone. Beat, hit, hit, hit until it breaks off. Then the claws, the, the right word are not claws, are talons. They are called talons. The, like the, 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 my long nails it uses for catching the prey. It will break all of them off. Now this season I'm talking about is not three days. It's like about 150 days. That's all about like five months. So the beak is out. The clothes are out. The feathers are out. So I want to ask you, how does it survive? Who feeds it? Are you together? Because what literally, what it has done, it has, it has destroyed all its tools. So who feeds it? Who takes care of it? Do you remember the love life of the ego? At that moment, the female ego will feed it. Are we together? It will be taking care of it. Just the same way it takes care of the young. It will be taking care of it. One of the things about egos, when finally when they connect, it is for life. Egos don't go hanya hanya ring. <laughs> they are faithful to each other. You see? Because at that moment, when it is at its lowest moment, you need commitment. You need somebody who is committed to you. At that moment, the ego is helpless. It has been stripped off of all its glory. And that is where now the mother ego will take care of it. After those about five months, the feathers will have grown back. The beak will have grown back. The talons will have grown back. And it can do another 40 years. And that's how they manage to live for 80 years. What does that mean for us? We are coming to the close of the year. And normally at the close of the year, things are like slow. We are like already from December 1, holiday mood begins to, 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 to pick in. Don't go to any government office in December. You are wasting your time. They are already on holiday mode. It's very difficult to get anything done for you. And I mean, generally, everybody is on a holiday mode. Can we use that time during the month of December to refresh, to re-energize, to refire, Are we together? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. John chapter 7 verse 37 to 38 says, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, 
as the scripture has said, out of his heart or out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. There comes a time when we are feeling low, when we are feeling weak, when we are feeling helpless, when we are feeling like we have no energy, when we have done our best, the best way we know how, and it does not seem to be working. That is the time to go to the Lord and just allow him to minister to us. We have seen the ego, powerful as it is. You know the way we say the lion is the king of the jungle. To me, the, the ego is the king of the air. I can't compare any other bird to the ego. And so if the ego can take moments just to refresh, to recharge, and so that it can be able to refire, we also need those moments. When we feel helpless, when we feel tired, when we feel like it is not working, Jesus is saying, when you thirst... Let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart or out of his belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. And after this time, you find that after the ego has been taken care of, in the 30 days, the feathers, the clothes, the talons grow back. An ego will never ever fully mature until it has gone through this process. The ones that don't end up going through that process end up dying. But for it to live that long, it has to go through that process. What does that process also signify? It also signifies dying to what you were before and emerging as a new person. Are we together? It means dying to what you were before. It has to forget every, everything it had been able to accomplish. It has to forget its accomplishments. And that's why I was saying some of you still live on in the glory of, I used to be number one from class one to class eight. You still bask in that glory. You have to die to that. There are other things to conquer. There are other exams to, to do. Watch this was a class eight. Can you go and do your first degree? Your second degree? You get can you go do your master's? Go do your PhD. Stop talking to us about class 8 exams. That means you rise up. After that, you die, 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 die to your past accomplishments. And look at the next thing that God has for you. The next thing that God wants you to conquer. And that is why Isaiah 40, 31 says... But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That means we have to have moments where we just go to wait on the Lord and just allow him to minister to us. And it is as he ministers to us that he renews our strength and we get strength to go the next left, lap, the next level. Are we together? Finally, as we close, Solomon. Solomon was a man of wisdom. And in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 18 to 19, he says, there be three things which are too wonderful for me. That means things that blew his mind. Things that he tried to understand and to comprehend and he could not. Yani he would think and his thinking would come to an end. This is what he says. Yeah, for which I know not. Verse 19. The way of an eagle in the air. The way of a serpent upon the rock. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea and the way of a man with a maid or with a man with a, with a woman. Those are things that were too much. I mean, he tried to think. He would not comprehend. And of course, that is why we were looking at the way of an ego. And that is why God has been speaking to us about becoming the ego Christian. Amen. And that brings us uh, to the end.
And I especially want to emphasize, especially during this time as we come to the close of the year, please let's get moments where we just sit still and allow the Lord to minister to us. Let's take moments where we take stock. We sit down and take stock and see how are we doing? What do we need to improve? What do we need to shed off? Can we shed off the old feathers? Can we shed off the bent bee? I mean beak. And the bent talons. Can we take time during this month of December as we go on a break? Can we take time to refresh? To re-energize so that we can be able to refire? Tell your neighbor, refresh re-energize so that you can refire. Amen? So that we look forward to great things even as we get into the new year. Amen. So we have come to the end of that uh, series and we thank God for speaking to us and I believe right in those seven points about uh, the ego and the, the other four that um, uh, Pastor Pascal gave us last Sunday. There is something that God has spoken to you. And I want us to take time to just meditate on that and work on that. Let it not just be a take home that will become just a take home at the level of saying, but let us embark on working and doing something about those things that God has spoken to us so that we can be the ego Christians that we are supposed to be. Amen. So we've come to that time when we want to give, uh, it is time to give our offerings and uh, the hostesses are going to wait on us in the spirit of excellence. And uh, the, for, that, for, uh, for those who are giving cash, the hostesses are waiting on us. And uh, for the ones who are giving uh, through M-Pesa, uh, the pay bill number is 247247. The account is 8808122. And before we give, we can just pray. Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you. We thank you for the way that you have ministered to us and spoken to us about the ego Christian. I thank you because for each and every one of us, there's something that you are speaking to us. There's one aspect, something that we can be able to learn, a principle that we can be able to take home, even concerning the ego. And I pray that you will give us the grace. You will give us the strength. You will help us, Lord, even to be willing to work on that one or two areas that you have spoken to us, even through these two Sundays as we have been learning about the ego. We want to thank you, Lord, even for an opportunity to be able to give our offering. We are grateful grateful to God as we come to give we are just coming back to say thank you because you have provided for us you have blessed us you have blessed the work of our hands you have given us the power to be able to make wealth you have even caused men to give to our bosom you have caused people to bless us and Lord we are just coming back to say thank you we thank you for them that are believing you for jobs pray that Lord you will open doors for them we thank you for them that are believing you for their businesses that may not be doing well we pray that Lord you will make us away for them. You will intervene oh God. You will arise and you will cause every enemy in their life to be scattered and that Lord the doors that you have opened for them we thank you because those doors no man can be able to shut. Lord we just want to thank you and we want to bless you. In Jesus mighty name we pray and everybody says Amen. As we give our offerings the praise and worship team will minister to us in song. Endelea inazidi kutembea maombi u yasikie ebo na u ni pandi she beleni na endelea. Nazidi kutembea maombi u yasikie ebo na u ni pandi she ebo na. Ni si mame ni pan. 
Shit. 